Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Cecilia Omitsu, uh, the events and partnership coordinator here at Brazil, Texas uh, Chamber of Commerce. We are here to, today to have our uh, webinar with uh, Rice University Education DSA and Schlumberger. Uh, so we welcome everyone for the event. Bratec is uh, celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, this year, and we're happy to facilitate networking and the relationship between business between Brazil and Texas. But we we'll also have, a, we think it's a very important way to work toward, you know, in, uh, developing ties with our academic community. So this webinar today is in part in with our very welcome to members, Julian Berger and RISE, today to see the opportunities that students can have in Brazil to study in the US and how posterior, what do you do if you have invested so much time and effort in this degree, what should you do with it, right? So thank you very much so, uh, for having you all today. And Adria, can you please pass you the floor? Thank you very much. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, just to, to let you know, my name is Adria Baker, and um, I'm so honored to be able to introduce the, the speakers here. Thank you, Cecilia, who um, is going to be moderating um, the session for us. She works for Bratech and is an event part and partnership coordinator and also is working on her master's from Harvard, and we appreciate her being willing to, to do this for us. Um, the speakers who will be speaking um, will be Rita Morconi. We're so grateful to have her. She's with Education USA, which is uh, part of the um, U.S. Department of Education's uh, Department of U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. She is uh, one of the 14 REACs, which is the Regional Educational Advising Coordinators. And she has a huge responsibility for the countries of uh, the Southern Cone, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. And um, so she trains them. She's over 40, over 40 offices in all of these um, countries. And as she's very experienced. She's been with um, um, Education USA for uh, 26 years. She is a huge well-known uh, person, personality in international education. And we're grateful that she's willing to give us this time um, as she works with embassies and consulates and officers and universities and, and uh, associations around the world. Thank you, Rita, for being here with us. We are also so happy to have Lucas Camargo. He is a graduate research student. Um, he do, he's working on his uh, PhD doctorate program at Rice University. Um, he actually did one year as a, with the Science Without Borders program at Rice and, and then uh, completed his bachelor's and master's at Unicampi and, um, and uh, Campinas in Brazil and did some uh, top research. And, and, and then we were so grateful to have him back. He's also um, a resident associate with the Resident Life. He's the vice president for um, advocacy and policy with the Graduate Student Association and is a very busy student and uh, doing research and is, is called upon for many talks. And so we're grateful for Lucas to be here. We're also so grateful for Thiago Liani uh, being here from um, Schlumberger, Brazil. Thank you so much, uh, Thiago, for agreeing to come. He started Schlumberger in 2007 um, in Saudi Arabia as a field engineer for well construction. And he returned to Brazil as the operations manager for drilling and medlogging for, for two years. And now he's assuming recruitment in Brazil for Schlumberger. And he's going to give us some great insights on internships. My name is Adria Baker. I'm the director. I'm the executive director for international students and scholars at Rice University, as well as the associate vice provost for international education. I have the honor of um, also leading the Brazil at Rice office initiatives, and being on the board with the Brazil um, at Bratec, Brazil Texas Chamber of Commerce. And we're, the purpose of this session is to give you all of these, I gave you the introductions first, so you can see the different perspectives of each one of the speakers, because we're saying, why would I get a, a degree? Why a degree in the United States? And um, it's just such an honor to work with students who come from all over the world, but in particular Brazilian students. And we want to tell you what the, the perks are. We have students um, who come as, as, as freshmen. They're coming at 18, starting their, you know, their first degree, or they come as a master's, or we have students that come as a PhD, postdocs, 
Um, but there's reasons why it might be helpful for them, or it may be a professional. You may have been out of the United, out of your schooling for a long time, out in the profession, and you're interested in getting some kind of credential to help, you know, a, a degree to help you as you continue with your company or your your career. Um, and so you're getting all these different perspectives because you're you're learning about about what what they're what's being um, told with Education USA and learn more about them. You're going to hear from a student perspective what it's really like as an undergrad and as a graduate in the United States and having studied two degrees in Brazil and what the the benefits are, as well as maybe internships internships when you return to Brazil or maybe even knowing more about internships and learning about those things. And then just, I get to give a plug for Rice University since I was invited to speak. So I get to tell you kind of a case study of a university, a private university in Houston, Texas, and some um, opportunities that students have. So um, that's the purpose. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Rita Marconi, who's gonna tell us about Education USA. And as we keep going, and we'll just kind of keep passing it down. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Rita. Thank you so much, Adria. It's a pleasure being here with uh, all of you uh, and talk about um, Education USA and what we are. Um, I'm just gonna share some slides with you. Um, and, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be within the time. So I'm Rita Morricone. I'm the Regional Education Advisor and Coordinator for Education USA in the, uh, uh, Southern Coal. And by Southern Coal, I mean uh, the countries in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. I am based in Brazil. Uh, I decided to put my slides in Portuguese, but if anybody needs English slides, I'll be happy to send them as well. Education USA is the US Department of State network with um, more than 400 offices in 178 countries. And right now in Brazil, we are uh, going to inaugurate our 42nd Education USA office. Uh, our offices are inside universities, and the, the last inaugurated was at the Federal University of Minas Gerais, um, by national centers, American spaces, um, and uh, we use uh, the five steps of U.S. study. So what we're telling you is studying in the United States is easier than you think. And if you go through these five steps, you know, which is uh, to know the universities, you know, find out about financial aid. Uh, and, and our Education USA advisors all over Brazil will be talking to you about uh, all kinds of uh, aid, you know, merit-based, need-based, uh, uh, also uh, all kinds of agreements, you know, that there are within states, you know, with Brazil and the United States. And then also, how to prepare your application. And, and at that time, you know, it's a lot of essay revisions, you know, and the process of applying that our advisors will handhold every one of you. And then when you are accepted, you know, how to uh, ask for the student visa and the pre-departure orientation with the also important, you know, uh, information on uh, cultural adeptness and uh, uh, intercultural competencies that you're going to be acquiring with your study in the United States. So um, our advisors do group orientation sessions for undergraduate, graduate, short-term courses, intensive English, postgraduate, you know, if you're a professor wanting to do a postdoc, uh, or uh, we also talk about some particular programs that we have, like the Opportunity Program. It is a program for underprivileged students of high, high academic excellence that we pay for the TOEFL, or SAT or ACT for the undergraduate, or GRE for the graduate. And we also uh, work on uh, education fairs. As a matter of fact, uh, just um, uh, last week, uh, we finished our Education USA virtual fair, the second virtual fair. And it's open for 30 days with 83 universities there. They, you can go to the booths and get all the information about these universities courses and even attend uh, the pre-recorded sessions on that fair. And I'll be sharing the information about uh, this virtual fair with you pretty soon. Um, we Education USA Brazil has an advisor every single day to talk to students. It's what we call the plantown, the office hours of Education USA. And we also have, uh, together with the U.S. Mission Brazil, a lot of um, 
uh, programs like a uh, conversation club, you know, academic preparedness uh, that we develop with the English language specialist, in this case is Professor Mary Birch, uh, to students in Brazil for free so that they can feel more prepared to apply to US colleges and universities. If you go to our Education USA site, which is uh, www.educationusa.org.br, you have uh, an agenda with all the webinars every single day from US higher education institutions, colleges and universities, and also from our education advisors. So you can click there, go into a webinar and find out about application and what each university is requesting. We have this fantastic um, essay writing resource center uh, this is free, absolutely free. It's a Canvas course also made with a partnership that I did with our English language office uh, with an English language specialist, Kate, Katie Subra. And you have nine chapters on how to write an essay, essays for LLMs, essay for MBAs. Uh, you have small videos that will guide you through. And even after these nine chapters, you do have uh, an uh, additional information on how to write your CV in English, or uh, even if you're going to do an interview, you know, now that many US higher education institutions in the US are test optional, um, how, you know, you could do an interview with a US higher education. So this is all free, all for you, and you have access to that at the educationusa.org.br uh, uh, site. I told you a little bit about the uh, opportunity a program, both undergraduate and graduate. We just uh, uh, finished a partnership now with the Lemon Foundation that's also going to give us more students for the graduate opportunity. And we are going to be having all students that are um, uh, under privilege of high academic excellence here. We have fantastic stories here. Many of our students uh, that came from, you know, very poor communities are now very well. And I'll, I'll cite one in particular, which is now the State Secretary of Rio de Janeiro, Renan Ferreirinha, who got admitted into eight universities with full ride and ended up at um, uh, uh, one uh, and graduated uh, cum laude and now is the Secretary of State. Uh, this is our fair, uh, the Education State Virtual Fair, and you do have access also through our website. Uh, and as I told you, you have 30 days um, to be there and collect all the information in the pre-recorded sessions. And we're here to tell you why the US, right? And so I am borrowing some of the slides from a campaign that was done by Temple University that's talking about the 4,700 universities at the undergraduate level and the 1,700 universities at the graduate level. So you can explore courses, fields, you know, before declaring a major, and you can take electives throughout your study. So at 17, you don't have to choose a major. You can choose a major at 19 after you've experienced two years of intense uh, programmatic events and, and programs. And maybe you got, you know, maybe like Tiago, I'm gonna uh, uh, make a joke, you know, you thought you'd be an engineering, but then you fell in love with computer science. So that's the beauty, the flexibility of US higher education that you can change your mind. Um, also the uh, recognition of your degree, right? Employers will you know, recognize your US degree as highly prestigious achievement. Also the networking of US universities. You have an office in the university that's called the placement office that will help you throughout your process. You know, you can participate in trainee fairs. Uh, you will be guided to the job market, be the academic or, you know, the, the job market in itself. So our US universities are among the best in the world, you know, uh, and the networking also that you can actually go to a place and say, okay, um, I, I graduated from Rice University. And it, it, it can be that your employer is, oh, so did I, you know? So that networking is priceless as well. Um, also the uh, job related experience that can lead you to a successful career anywhere in the world, right? Uh, so uh, when students finish a degree in the US, they can apply for what we call optional practical training. Right now there are 223,000 plus optional practical training requests. And that means that you can stay uh, from one to two years after graduation, uh, still in the student visa, 
but actually applying your knowledge towards the job market. Um, also, the US has the highest number of international students. You know, we have more than a million students. So you're going to be meeting people from all over the world. Lucas can attest to that here. Uh, and also the beautiful US, right? I mean, from sea to shining sea, the beauty of the US is vast. You know, you, you can choose a location, urban, suburban, rural, you know, um, and uh, take the US, you know, historic and cultural attractions from beaches, mountains to the cities filled with museums, global cuisine and whatnot. Um, become a well-rounded global citizen. You know, I think I mentioned that before. You know, look at, um, you know, the wealth of offers, you know, at uh, the first two years, for instance, if you're doing an undergraduate education, you know, you could be uh, taking general education courses that you never dreamed of, you know, arts of the Western world, creative process in dance, cyberspace and society, gender and world societies, you know, math for a digital world, race and ethnicity in American cinema sport and leisure in American society, and so many more. So that, that general education and liberal arts and interdisciplinary can form an engineering to be a literature professor and a literature professor to be an engineering, depending on the double majors you choose. Um, and also adjust to a new country, you know, um, the support of uh, US uh, higher education institutions, you know, with the career counseling, with um, a special events, writing center, academic and advising support, and even health related support, you know, in terms of mental health as well. You know, you are not alone. When you are a US university, you belong to a community and the community, you know, supports you as a whole. Um, you also learn to express your thoughts and opinions as an individual. It's the Socratic method, you know, that the professor is the facilitator and, and you are there uh, helping the class. You know, you're growing intellectually as a leader. Uh, and uh, we emphasize independent and critical thinking all the way through. Um, and also, you know, the U.S. has a high number of U.S. Nobel Prize winners. I thought I would throw that in there, right? Uh, and many of these Nobel Prize winners are foreign-born residents, you know. Um, and other foreign-born residents, they are kind of uh, famous out there, you know, that um, have studied at U.S. universities. So I thought I, I would put some slides for you to see. I'm not going to mention all of them. It will be uh, too much, but just for you, I, I like to mention, for instance, um, you know, Kathleen um, uh, uh, Kerkesty, uh, the COVID-19 researcher, you know, born in Hungary, you know, and, and, and it was a fantastic person for the world and so many others, right? So leading by example on students and immigrants. This is how you get to know Education USA. Um, we have uh, the educationusa.org.br in Brazil. And we have educationusa.state.gov. Uh, it's our um, branch um, website in, uh, at the Department of State. If you want to find the Education USA office near you, you can go to either one. Uh, there are 42 offices in Brazil. Uh, you can email our regular contact. We have Education USA in Facebook, in Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. So please um, befriend us, you know, follow us. Um, also our US embassy and consulates in Brazil. We have the US embassy in Brazilia, US consulate in Rio, Sao Paulo, Recife, uh, Porto Alegre, and a presence in Belo Horizonte. And um, all of them replicate a lot of the social media from Education USA. So you will always hear about webinars, courses, visits, fairs. So please make sure to follow us. And uh, that's it in 10 minutes, uh, Adria, and back to you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Hita. Um, now we're going to go. We really appreciate everything that Education USA does for us and the experience that you bring to this panel is amazing. Um, Lucas, please tell us that from, from the perspective of a, a now graduate student, but who's done undergraduate research work and, and exchange um, from your perspectives, please. Hi, my name is Lucas Garcia Camargo. I'm currently a third year PhD student uh, at Rice University in the bioengineering department. Um, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the student aspect of why a degree in the US. 
So first, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about my story, about how who I am, how did I get here. Uh, I did my undergrad in Brazil at Unicampi and the University of Faculdade de Engenharia Química, which is chemical engineering for undergrad. And I was very fortunate to be selected as one of the uh, scholarship uh, people for Science Without Borders, uh, Ciencias Sem Fronteras for the Brazilians in 2012. And I got to come to Rice for a year in my undergrad. Uh, as you can tell, it was an amazing opportunity and amazing experience, which uh, in the future led me to come back. Uh, but yeah, so that was my undergrad career. Uh, during, after that, I did my master's, uh, again, at Unicampi in chemical engineering as well. And I was uh, fortunate to be a lecturer at University of State of Sao Paulo, UNESP, for a year and a half teaching undergrad over there, which further led me to my passion, which is lecturing and being a professor, which, again, led me to apply to being, uh, a graduate student in the United States. So my reason of why I chose the United States uh, in regards to other possibility of countries or why not stay in the in Brazil itself, for example, Unicamp is one of the best researching uh, universities in the entire Latin America. Why leave? I feel like one of the biggest things that I felt all throughout both my undergraduate experience in Brazil and here and the graduate degree over there and here is the quality of students and faculty pretty much matched. Everyone is really, really good, top-notch, excellency. But the biggest difference, differences that I see, in, and it's something that Rita uh, talked about, is the funding, basically. <laughs> so it's the resources that the university have up uh, past the just the teaching aspect. They have literally labs that you can do research or top not top not research with uh, expensive equipment. You don't have you have uh, access to uh, getting mental health uh, help and on campus fitness centers and everything. So there is such a, a big uh, field of like uh, extra resources to encompass and enhance your opportunity, which gives you like the edge. So you can try to do the same amount of research in Brazil or somewhere else, but it, it it's almost like you're trying to get to something being like hold back a little bit. And that was why I felt that the United States was a place that uh, it could nourish my talents uh, and I loved my time at Rice University, which led me to apply here amongst other universities. And I'm very happy uh, to say that I got here and uh, I plan on continuing staying. As Adria said, I'm very uh, passionate about giving back a little. Uh, I feel like I've had um, monumentous people in my life, Adria being one of them, that helped me so much, which I feel almost in doubt of like having to give back. So I participate in the Graduate Student Association, which uh, it's basically a student body that represents the entire student community, uh, the graduate student community, reaching back to the university and changing anything that we see as problematic. So we do have a voice with the university. Uh, we are very, we're heard by the university and the administration on what to do and how to make our lives better. Um, I'm, uh, as I just said, a residential assistant at the graduate housing. So I work with the graduate housing over here uh, and facilitate all the move-ins and everything for all the incoming students and am the liaison between graduate students and the incoming students uh, with the department at Rice. So I feel like they're, my main concern, my main thing about having a degree from abroad is everything else that comes with it. It's not a simple like, okay, I have a degree and this is what it will give you. It's literally everything around you that is made for you to excel. It gives you more chances and more opportunities to be better, I feel like. You have professors that have published in the most amazing uh, uh, journals in the entire world. They have 
Uh, they can send you places. They can send you to different universities to collaborate and things like that. And if you're, if you want to be involved, everything is open for you and they want to hear your voice and your voice matters. So that's the biggest difference that I felt uh, for having a degree over here. And I, I think it's really important for people to understand that it's possible. It's not a one in a million. It's not a, oh, you need to be your, the very top of your class in the best university in the world to get here. That is not really it. I have a lot of friends that weren't the best in their classes, but they got here because they did a bunch of stuff next to it. So like they got involved with public speaking, they got involved with like research and everything else. So you bid, you always build a resume around you to make you like to sell yourself a little bit the best you can and show to the world that you're more than just a number, more than just a name, I'm more than just Lucas. Uh, and uh, I feel like Brazilians are amazing people to be everywhere. And uh, I have a lot of professors that are really interested in uh, having more people from Brazil. So don't think you can't do it, just apply. Let's try and come study with us. Thanks everyone. I'll throw it back to Adria. Thank you so much, Lucas. I'm going to now share my screen and talk, um, talk about a case study university. Um, I'm gonna talk about Rice University and I, I'm grateful. I'm going to talk about why a degree in the United States, but maybe looking at it from a case study of our university. And please know that there are hundreds of thousands of universities in the United States. Many are, ours is a private, um, highly selective research institution, but there's many other universities that are large public or they're small liberal arts or they're, um, they're, there may be a community college that um, only do two years and, and there are technical schools. So please know that there's four, they're just like as in Brazil where there's so many different kinds of universities, we have the same. We have different kinds of accreditation, um, but ours is a case study and I'm grateful to be a part of this because as being on the, um, the, the board of Bratech, I get the opportunity to, to showcase RICE some, and because we have a special initiative, it's called Brazil at RICE. And so um, we're very, very grateful for all of our Brazilian students, and we have them in every level. So as I talk about who we are and what we do, I wanted to answer the question, why a U.S. degree? Because it piggybacks on what Lucas just said, that there's certain perks and being a student, there's things that everywhere you go, if I went to study in Brazil, I would get certain perks because I would learn new things. Same thing when a Brazilian comes to Rice, there's going to be new things that you learned. So, um, so I'm going to talk real quickly about, you know, about Rice and who are the Brazilians at Rice and what are the opportunities for Brazilians at Rice, all with the intrinsic question at the top, why a U.S. degree? And again, feel free to kind of think broader in other universities. Um, we, but about our university, we are located in the heart of, Texas, uh, heart of Houston, Texas, in the museum district, highly um, uh, private, highly selective. We have kind of a residential college system at the undergraduate level, and we have tons of trees. We're called the tree campus of the USA. I don't know if you knew that. Um, we're we're um, 109 years old, and we were just recently rated um, number seven in, U in, in the USA by niche.com. You can look at the different ratings, the international ratings. We've had two Nobel Prize winners um, and dealing with um, the precursor to nanotechnology. And so we're very um, highly ranked in anything that has to do with nano engineering, nano science, and nano everything. Um, and then we have a really great uh, student ratio, faculty one to six with degrees that are the first, the bachelor's, and then the master's and the PhD. And we do have um, lots of sports, you know, um, division one and all kinds of sports. And then just to tell you just briefly, we do have why a degree, because you're gonna learn different kinds of aspects from the things that um, also Brazil excels in with engineering in our school, engineering, natural sciences, social sciences, uh, humanities, architecture, music, 
uh, business. And then we also, you had already heard from um, Dr. Vassar from the School of Continuing Studies who talked about different uh, non-degrees, but that are professional certificates that can help. We have, as a research institution, we have all kinds of centers of different kinds of research. Um, the Smalley Curl Institute is, deals with nanoengineering, but then you have a think tank, the public policy that deals with things that have to do with Brazil and, and Asian studies and uh, leadership and all kinds of engineering and theory. Uh, one of our top Brazilian faculty leads the Center for Theoretical Biological Physics. Um, we have all kinds of connections with Brazil, and these are things that we're very proud of in terms of our, you know, agreements around uh, the country. And we have, we're hoping to continue to grow our student uh, Brazilian populations with students and researchers. And we have a special uh, place for, for Brazilian um, students and scholars to go and connections uh, with the students, the Chamber of Commerce and the consulate and special faculty grants and different interdisciplinary uh, relationships. So you get to see how different institutions work and you grow as a student because there's so many connections. Uh, just briefly, here's the institutions that we do have official MOUs with uh, memorandums agreements. Um, but we also have many institutions that we're working with across the country. And we don't even have a, um, written agreements, but we have all kinds of operating uh, official agreements with them. So we're very active with Brazil. So if you came to a place like Rice, you're going to be very involved with not only your uh, Rice in the United States and Texas um, and meeting people from around the world, but you'd also have your connection with your home country. Um, here are some of our students. We have students who are at the undergraduate level, uh, Brazilians that are, uh, and the master's professional, master's thesis or they're doing a PhD. And then we have people who are on exchange programs that are here. And then we have people here on a short term, all different levels that are um, researchers and top faculty. But what we have found with the Brazilian students that is just amazing is that they don't just come and get a fabulous degree, but they come and teach us about Brazil. They teach us Portuguese, they, they give back to the community in a way that is just very unique and it's very exciting. Um, as a matter of fact, we had these Brazilian graduate students who came and gave a special class to some, to the, and they gave back to the community by just teaching special needs students about Brazil. And they had a great time, we had a great time, but we just constantly learn about Brazil because our students and scholars are fabulous. But what can you do? Opportunities you can, um, as a master's student uh, in STEM, for example, uh, you can maybe even ask, we can request if you've attended this sem seminar, if we can maybe waive the, the, the application fee if you're applying, and um, you could contact me about that if you wanted to. We also have fully funded doctoral programs. Um, but if you come with some funding also from your home country or your home institution, then you would even have a better chance of getting admitted because it is selective. Um, and then we have um, students, we have some scholarships for undergrads. Um, a lot of them don't have scholarships, a lot of them do. So there's, you know, there can be funding questions. We also have research opportunities. So we have students in all these levels and we have researchers in all levels. We have them coming as, you know, um, undergraduate students, or we have them come, well, usually it's mainly, yeah, we've had undergraduate exchange, we have PhD students who are doing sandwich programs, we have people doing a postdoc. And then one thing I'd like people who are, maybe if you know about that, someone who's in this more of a higher level of their undergraduate, their first degree, they have the Gulf Coast Research Undergraduate Symposium. And so please let check it out, G-C-U-R-S, GCURS at rice.edu. Um, you can submit a deadline, um, an abstract, and actually present, and then you have coaches in those certain departments, they're mainly STEM departments that are going to talk, not all of them. Um, the symposium can be online or in person, but it's on October 16th and 17th, and it's a great opportunity for undergraduate students who are, are thinking about research or doing some research and present their pro, pro, program and pro, um, and, and help their resumes as they present their, their presentation. Um, and then they get coached by great teachers. 
We had a great opportunity to meet your uh, Brazilian minister, uh, Pontes, who was here from Science and Technology and Innovation, a minister, minister. And many of our graduate student leaderships got to meet with them and um, had those connections. And of course, that's through Bratech. Um, and then just, just know that you'd be meeting, we're a very international university, so many people, we have about 100 countries represented or more. Um, with our students and scholars. So you're also stepping into just an international population. But we welcome you to Houston. We're near the Space Center. So we do take trips to, to NASA. Um, and then here's just, this is the, the original building where our office is and the Brazil at Rice office is, the international office. And we're right 10 minutes from downtown Houston and just um, one of the most diverse, uh, it's the most diverse city in the United States but maybe even in the world. So we welcome you to think about rice, but not only, these are the extra things that you get. You get um, exposure to the world at a university, but you also get, and you get a great education, but you also get more and uh, co-curricular activities, other things are important as you come to a university in, in the United States, because we want you to, to learn not just your education and your degree, but to learn, have involvement in many ways so it develops you professionally. Um, Chago, I'm gonna pass it on to you and uh, you're gonna to talk to us about internships. Thanks a lot, Adria. My name is Thiago, uh, I work for Schlumberger and uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how is the process of uh, recruiting trainees and uh, interns inside Schlumberger. First, uh, I would like to, to introduce what, who is Schlumberger and who we are. So we are the leading provider of uh, the largest provider of technology in the energy industry. Uh, we are the biggest service provider of uh, companies uh, of oil and gas industry in the whole world. So we are located in more than 120 countries and we have more than 170 different nationalities. Okay, so basically, uh, I want to start to, 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 to introduce to you the four types of uh, jobs we have specifically for fresh outs. So the first one is for the operations, who is uh, the persons that um, normally we hire engineers that goes to the field. So they embark, they go to the, the platforms of oil and gas or even onshore or offshore. And then we have the part of the technology they are engineers and that can go to the manufacturing centers and geoscience and petrotechnical uh, students can be the geophysics, petrophysics, reservoir engineers. And also we have the commercial and business part to work in the sales and commercial team here in Brazil. Okay, so how we apply, how we hire uh, those candidates especially you that are working in USA. What's the biggest benefit to study in US? Basically, as I said, Schlumberger is located in more than 120 countries in 170 nationalities. So if you study and do your graduation in USA, you'll be uh, exposed to different nationalities, different culture, and this will uh, allow you to adapt much better in our uh, culture, right? So we do not hire people only for Brazil. So we hire people for around the world. So I can hire Brazilians uh, in the process here and they can go to anywhere in the whole world. So I started in uh, Saudi Arabia in 2007. So I was hired straight there. But if you want to stay uh, to apply for a specific country, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. I'll be showing you how you do it. So the first thing, um, you do, you go to the careers.slb.com and in there will be a, a, a tab it's called early careers. So you can apply there with all of those four uh, categories I've said before. So by doing this, uh, we will receive your application. So whenever we have the positions open, we will check uh, the profile, the CV, and if it fits, we will invite you for an interview. On this interview, you go to a, what we call the first uh, round, which is, can be with uh, managers or it can be one-on-one -on -one with the recruiters or it can be any activity. 
And then from the first interview, you go to the second round. This is called second round specifically because it's not only one day. It's two full days of activities that we use to analyze the candidates for these uh, trainee jobs. After that, if you pass in the process, so you, you'll be an employee for Shilambeji. The trainee process uh, works uh, pretty well inside Shilambeji in the way that we do not choose your uh, degree. So we can be any degree. So if you want to work in the field, for example, you can be mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, um, you can do masters, there's no issue of that, but we just need a specific profile for this position, which you can handle the, the whole job on the field, right? Uh, and for that, for the people that are present here in this event, I'll give you a, a, a gift, right? You need to apply for the career SLB, but if you want to send your CV to us here in Brazil, you can send it straight to our email. I will put in the chat later on. It's recruitingbrz at slb.com. And don't forget to put the title of the email. If you are applying for a position of a trainee, it means that it's, you are going to graduate in less than six months, or you have graduated already in the last three years. For trainee, you need, if you have four years of graduation, we do not uh, get as a trainee, but you might have some experience. We can absorb you as an experienced professional. And if you want an internship, which is internship program is more locally, okay? So if you want an internship program, you must live in Brazil, actually. So you can return, get the, the internship program, spend one year, up to two years in the internship program. But since you are in US, there is another kind of internship program that it's a, an internship for the people that needs uh, uh, this program to, to have a graduation. So if you are six months before your graduation, you can participate on the internship, get the experience inside Chilambeje. So you were going to participate the, the recruiting process the same as trainee. But before you have six months as an intern, and then you can go straight as a trainee. You don't need to participate in another recruiting process. So this is a, the big advantage uh, for this process. Okay, so if you have any other question, it would be a pleasure to, to receive your concerns or questions through this email or even here after the, the presentation. Thank you, Tiago. Thank you for your time. So we'll be starting now our uh, Q&A session. Okay, so we already have some questions. Uh, if you're familiar with the process as an attendee, you can use the button that uh, says Q&A on the uh, behind you. So the first question that we have here is uh, for uh, Rita, I believe you. Can students travel directly to the United States instead of having the, to be 14 days in another country to enter the U.S.? So what is, what is the current position of the government right now? Yes, I'm very happy to say that students can travel directly. There is something that's called NIE, the National Interest Exemption. And uh, even though there is still a presidential proclamation for Brazilians entering the US having to spend 14 days out of Brazil, students are exempted from this proclamation. So uh, if you are a student that you're getting an F visa or a J visa to a US higher education institution, which means that you are accepted, at a U.S. higher education institution, you can travel directly from Brazil to the U.S. without having to quarantine. Thank you, okay. Cecilia. Yeah, that's that's great. So uh, this is something that I think it's quite interesting. This questions about because uh, especially for Brazilian students, because do I need to have a master's to get in a doctoral program in the USA? So I believe Adria, can you say something about it, Rita? Um, I'll go ahead and start from, and then I think Rita can follow it. Um, so in some universities, you would need to, to um, it depends on the program, it depends on the university. It, and so, for example, in my institution, if you are applying to one of the STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math fields, you would most likely not need to get a master's, but it depends, again, on the program. Because graduate programs, PhD programs 
are decided within the department. I mean, it, the de decisions are within the department. So some people do, and then they have a different, maybe they have less um, the coursework that they have to take once they get into their doctorate. Some don't, they start, they get the, the bachelor's degree equivalent in Brazil, and then they can apply and do their master's PhD uh, together. So it, it depends on each department. Now, if you're in humanities or social sciences or maybe architecture, music, those you would want, they would need the bachelor's to get into those master's. I mean, they would need the master's to get in the PhD program. Each, in, each university is going to be different. Again, each program is unique. So you have to look at the degree requirements for each program. Again, at Rice with STEM, you would not necessarily, but sometimes you do. Uh, Rita, you want to go uh, broader than that? No, you, you actually cover it all. I think my comment is, you know, I think many of the Brazilian students uh, found that out during the time that they did their uh, Science Without Borders program, which in the U.S. was called Brazilian Scientific Mobility Program. You know, many of them finished the bachelor's and because they were in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, they could apply directly to a PhD without having a master's. But like you just well said, Adria, it really depends on program and university. Thank you. Just to, just to add a comment from a student perspective, for example, I had a master's from Brazil because I wanted to be more competitive in my application. I hadn't done too much research during my undergrad because I focused on my, uh, my coming to the US. So I thought my degree, I didn't have any papers or anything published or anything. So I thought in order to enhance my CV, it would, I would be more competitive if I did that, but I don't think it was necessary. Like it, it, it made too much of a difference. So as Adria said, like, since it varies so much from department to department, it's in no ways a necessity. And it's a, and a lot of the times it can be like a waste of your time, quote unquote, because you're doing that for a period just to get in here and you could have gone directly from your undergrad. But it does in uh, in some ways it might not hurt. I think it got me accepted, but I don't know. Thank you. So and turning about uh, also, do all universities grant funding for doctoral programs, masters, undergrad? So how can we find out about that? Because in the end, okay, I can go to a doctoral program, but how do I know? if that university is funding that, if they provide grants, because it would be a little bit different from a sponsorship a grant, uh, scholarship, how would that work? Adria, Rita, we have something. I think you should start with Rita first, and then I'm gonna fill in for more of a, a, a smaller perspective. Yeah, so, so uh, the, the, the beauty of this is that it's a puzzle. <laughs> we have to put the puzzle together and that's where Education USA can help you. Our advisors will take you by the hand and show you how to research for financial aid opportunity. And financial aid opportunities could be directly with US higher education institutions, colleges and universities, or sometimes even with other sources. You know, for instance, there is a fund uh, that's um, pushed by uh, OAS, the Organization of American States, that's called the Roe Fund, and it, it gives loans from the Americas to the Americas. There are associations that also give some kinds of grants, uh, American Association of University Women for the women, uh, in, or, you know, sometimes universities where the departments have particular funds, you know, like teaching assistantships, you know, or research assistantships. That's when you actually are helping a professor doing uh, some kind of a research and having a stipend or, or perhaps, you know, a, a scholarship. The teaching assistantship, you are a TA. That means you're teaching a class and you also have a stipend. You can have a research assistantship. You can have you know, a, a, a stipend, a scholarship from the department. There are tons of possibilities. Uh, we call it a financial aid package because sometimes you can get something from here, something from here and make it a package. Uh, so please look for your Education USA advisors and we'll be happy to show you how to research for financial aid. Adria? I completely agree with Rita because um, I like the idea of it being a puzzle and a puzzle and the fact that it has to fit the pieces for you. 
I recommend, at least at my institution, for the undergraduate, if you need the financial support, I think you need to tell people up front. You need to, you need to be honest of what you need. Um, and then when it comes to, say, a master's, a professional master's at my institution, that is completely, I mean, there's not person, there's, there's limited scholarship for that. But sometimes people will apply for, say, a Fulbright uh, in, in their home country, and they can do a professional master's. We've had a lot of that, um, prof say, Fulbrighters who've come to Rice, for example, or they get um, some kind of funding from their home institution or government, or they get some partial funding for our institution. When it comes to thesis masters, they may be working with the department and doing research that they have a research grant. You don't know. When it comes to PhD in our university, um, almost all of it will be funded from the university, except you have a better chance of getting admitted because it's so highly selective that you, if, if you get some other funding, like maybe if you got some even a small part of government funding from copies or something like that to get a scholarship, then that would be, or for Fulbright or something else, that would allow you then to be able to, to be more selective and, and or more kind of attractive in terms of being admitted. So then you have other institutions where you're going to apply depart, directly to the department or to the graduate office. They're, each one's going to do it differently, and some are going to have funding in some departments, some are not going to have, some are going to have partial funding. So you have to find out, you have to read, you have to do your homework on why that institution, why you, why this program, why it makes sense, and why it makes sense for you financially. Thank you, Adria. Thank you, Rita. So another question here is about how are U.S. degrees recognized by companies and universities in Brazil, like when students are returning? And I think that also, like, uh, uh, can you comment a little bit and also Thiago too, because this is something that you talk about how we you apply, how we present your, you know, your resume. So sometimes and I think, and this is a comment that I know personally, that some people say, okay, I, I studied in the U.S., I had this amazing degree, but I know people that returned to Brazil and they had a hard time getting their degree recognized. So how would like a company like Schlumberger would you know, work toward, since it is an international company, right? And how for a national company, maybe Hita and Adria can say a little bit about that, about this recognition. Okay. For Schlumberger, it's, uh, we do appreciate uh, CVs of people that have studied abroad, especially in the US. Uh, we do receive that here in Brazil. Uh, for the Brazilians, we do the selection here in Brazil and we can send them for other countries, right? Uh, every year, we have a, a set of uh, positions open around the whole world where we appreciate the diversity. So, we have uh, positions, let's say, for Brazilians located in Mexico, uh, Saudi, uh, Japan, anywhere in the country. And also we have mostly of the, the positions for Brazil. So they'll be working here in Brazil. And this doesn't mean that they will stay forever here in Brazil. They can uh, work here for a while, get promoted, which is uh, it's very straightforward. The promotion here inside Chilambergé, if you ask if you enter as a trainee, you have a fixed step program. So in three to four years, the promotion only depends on the candidate. It's just like a university you go to schools. And some of the schools are in US as well. We have a huge training uh, center in US. And after that, they are going to graduate inside Schlumberger. Let's say they're gonna be senior uh, employees or engineers that can they can apply to go to somewhere else in the in the in the whole world where they or they want to stay here they will right uh, for the for, this is for training for the internship uh, the best uh, way to to enter inside the company is uh, for the short term internship is like 6 months they participate of the process as they are trainee and in these uh, six months, they are going to get trained. If they have a good performance, which they normally do, they're going to be hired straight away as a trainee. Okay. So uh, the CV, uh, they can be reached to us through the, the careers.slb.com. And the tip I put in the chat 
which is through our personal email, especially for Brazil and Brazilians, okay? Uh, if you want, uh, if you are Brazilian and you want to, to stay in US, let's say, to be recruited in US for a Shulamaji recruiter, um, you can apply in the careers.slb.com and you can uh, select the country you want to, to stay, the country you want to apply for the job, okay? Uh, thank you, uh, Thiago. We have time for one last question here. Uh, I think this is for Adria, right? This is some, Rodrigo is asking who can help like him particularly with application instructions in Rice University. Who should he be reaching out for having this information that we've been talking about specifically for Rice? So I'm putting my, my email in the, the chat. It's abaker at rice.edu. And you could write me and I will direct you depending upon what the level is and what department and what you're interested in. I'm not sure if it's undergraduate, graduate. And, and so the answer is write me and I'm happy to direct you properly. Um, and, and can I just add a little bit more to the answer to what Tiago said? If you, um, if you apply to, to the, if you do a degree in the United States, you should be eligible to do, and Rita mentioned this in her presentation, to do some kind of practical training, which is practical training to all of, um, to, which is a year of experience or even up to three years of experience on your visa that you can still get experience before you go say back to Brazil so that you have not only a degree from a from an international university or from the United States, but then you can take that back with experience within the United States. So it just helps you kind of broaden your experience of what you've done in Brazil, what you're doing here. Um, so it just makes you kind of a broader um, candidate. And if I can add to that as well, Adria, you know, uh, for you to have your degree recognized, you know, the um, Ministry of Education in Brazil, they have a portal called Carolina Bori. Uh, and it's all the information about the revalidation and recognizing uh, uh, diplomas uh, abroad. And so um, you can go there directly. Usually you're going to go to the nearby public university uh, and get your diploma recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we know it's still happening, the Education in USA Virtual Fair. Uh, can you just make a quick comment, Rita, about that so we can wrap it up? Because I know that a lot of uh, the things that students are going to need if they reach out to Education USA to support, right, to have all this information. So can you say a little bit about it? The Education is USA Virtual Fair, please. Sure, Cecilia, my pleasure. So uh, if you go to our site, educationusa.org.br, you do have the link directly for the Education USA Virtual Fair. The fair took place last Wednesday, but the booths for 83 US universities are there, the materials are there, and also the on-demand sessions that were pre-recorded on financial aid for undergraduate study, financial aid for graduate study, how to apply to undergraduate, how to apply to graduate. It was recorded in Spanish, in Portuguese, and in English. So we have all the sessions there. You can watch some of these sessions and then look for an Education USA advisor at the Plantão Education USA uh, to talk directly and ask your questions about applying to US higher education institutions. And people like Adria Baker, they're always with us, you know, so we can connect you directly to the people that are in charge of your admissions. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rita, Tiago, Adria, Lucas. Uh, thank you very much for this very interesting webinar. We're going to have uh, a lot of information here. Tiago, thank you very much for, for coming up and bringing a little bit how would be the opportunity. So what would be the open door to get to a, such a big company as Chulomberger, you know? Same thing for Adria, what's the opportunity to be? Thank you, Lucas, for coming and telling us how it was for you because as, as a Brazilian, I can understand that can be a little bit hard thinking. Is it really a, such a hard dream to fulfill, to study in the USA? And with the right information, with the right guidance, it is possible. Like you said, let's try to do it first before we say you cannot do it, right? So you're here to say, I did it correctly. So thank you, everyone. Uh, please uh, uh, 
stay tuned for more events that you're going to have here at BradTech. Thank you very much for your participation and have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Thank you all. Obrigada. Bye. Bye. Obrigada. Bye.